Our next thesis is entitled, A Battle Won, A Soul Lost, The Church's Responsibility to Veterans with PTSD. Please welcome Bethany Steele. Imagine being a soldier ordered by your commanding officer to kill an innocent civilian. Imagine how you would feel. Rob grew up in Southern California, having a strong foundation in faith and his church. After high school, he joined the army and was deployed in Afghanistan. One day, his platoon was ordered to go to an ISIS stronghold in the city. They arrived, but once he saw the horror occurring, Rob wanted to flee. ISIS was using innocent civilians as shields. But duty called. His commander ordered him to shoot, so he obeyed. He watched the limp body fall to the ground. At that moment, his brain goes into survival mode, processing the information differently than a brain at rest. The limbic system, dealing with emotions and memory, is activated, and the event encoded in his implicit memory. Now, in the future, whenever Rob encounters a trigger, a stimulus that causes recall, unconscious, unintentional, from a previous trauma, he is sent right back to the memory of killing a civilian. Following orders struck his conscience, resulting in shame, guilt, anxiety, and anger, having broken his moral code. Now, he does not realize the sound of a car backfiring, or the smell of smoke, or his own shortness of breath, makes his body go back into the emotional state he was in when he pulled the trigger, believing the flashback is real. Stateside, Rob tried to cease his incessant suffering by not reflecting on his tour. But the harder he tried to forget, the worse it got. Finally, he turned to alcohol. It was the only thing that put him to sleep at night, that helped him forget. Rob represents the 31% of veterans from Vietnam with post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. He represents the 53% of suffering veterans who do not seek out treatment. Rob represents the 22 veterans who commit suicide every day, or the almost two veterans who will kill themselves before you leave your seat tonight. Given this, the church has a divine opportunity and responsibility to work with medical professionals, aiding veterans with PTSD and moral injury because God is the ultimate source of truth and reality. Rob went to his trusted pastor, pouring out his heart about the guilt engulfing him from killing a civilian, leading to his alcohol abuse. His pastor said the only way to make the torment end was to repent, trusting in God's plan. He knew God would remove these sinful anxieties, restoring Rob. But if he persisted in his sin, he was not welcomed back into the church. But the pastor didn't know that's all Rob had been doing, crying out to God, asking for forgiveness. Had the pastor not been so quick to pronounce an ultimatum, he would have realized this was not just a result of sin or lack of repentance. A biological component was also at work, needing to be addressed. If the pastor had known the causes, symptoms, and triggers of PTSD, he would have been able to offer Rob empathy, knowing he was hurting, Christian love, sharing in his suffering and compassion, knowing that dealing with his trauma and the sin of alcoholism 
were not the same. The pastor could have offered Rob spiritual care, pointing him to psychological help. Though not all churches respond this way, 70% of pastors feel unequipped to deal with mental illness. If they were more willing to learn the various causes and symptoms, how many more could they serve? If the church was more open to understanding mental illness, like PTSD, they would be more effective ambassadors for Christ, working to gently restore the broken and confused hearts affected by moral injury. Rob needed help, but didn't know how to ask for it. If he was offered to be checked up on, prayed for, taken to doctor's appointments, included in social gatherings, or brought meals when he didn't have the strength to get out of bed because he was suicidal, he would feel less alone. These are practical, simple ways the church can help a veteran struggling with PTSD. Even if he rejected the help offered, he would know he had a place in the church. Rob was telling this story to my father, a chaplain at the VA. Rob was lost, betrayed, and abandoned. Telling his story, crying, sweating, shaking, he said he could never step foot into a church again because the shame he was suffering. As Paul directs the church in 1 Corinthians 12, 26, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. So also must we acknowledge this. As the church, we have a God-given opportunity to serve those suffering, showing the light of Christ. We must encourage veterans struggling with PTSD to seek out medical and psychological services, but we are obligated to offer spiritual support and emphasize while sin still affects their life, their pain from trauma is not rooted in sin. We should respond with compassion and mercy. Knowing veteran struggle is painful and difficult, but we must distinguish to them. Their identity is in Christ and his sacrifice, not the actions they have done. They have a new hope and future in Jesus Christ. Thank you.